So far, we have looked at bitmap indexes that represent specific individual values. So in a bitmap like this one representing the year of birth, we would set a bit if that value 1981, for example, is set in this row. So here this bit signals that this row has a value 1981 and that row has a value of 1981. This is kind of a problem if you want to query for specific ranges. Assume we have a query like, or whatever, let's say I want to have all those colleagues that are born in between 1980 and 1984, for example. So how would I evaluate that with a bitmap like that? Well, then I have to read all of those bit lists here, from here to here. Each of those bit lists have to be read. In this video example, it's not so expensive to read these five bit lists. But again, in reality, it might be that you have many, many tuples, millions of tuples. So the bit lists are really long. And second, the range might cover many individual bit lists. Consider just you have an arbitrary integer domain and then you have a range like whatever, 42 to 7839. So you have thousands of bit lists that would have to be considered. So the bitmap index here is not so useful. I mean, it depends. You have to calculate it to come up with the numbers whether that pays off or not. You have to make a cost estimate. But basically, well, what you already see from that, there may be many, many bit lists in between those two values that have to be read. So the question is, is there a way to use a bitmap in a way that you can also support range queries very well? And the answer is yes, there is a way to do that. And that is a range encoded bitmap index. So we use the same structure as in the standard bitmap. However, the way how we set the bits differs. Here we only set the bit if that value exists. So we don't set the bit here. So here in the range encoded bitmap, we also set this bit if this value is the value that actually exists in the original table colleagues. However, we also set the bits of all the bit lists representing bigger values. The pattern that you see here is always there's a number of zeros and then there's a number of ones in every row, zeros and ones. And the first one is the actual value that is set in the original table. So here it's 1979, here it's 1982, here it's whatever, 1984 and so forth. So up to that value, excluding this range here, everything is set to zero. Then comes the actual value and following after that, everything is set to one. So basically the semantic is as follows. For each value and row ID pair, so values are the ones here, row IDs are the specific rows. If the table in a specific attribute for a specific row ID, if the value that's represented here, so one of those, so in this specific example, let's make it more concrete, what we do is we check if the table, the table is colleagues, and then we check a specific attribute that is year of birth. I'll just abbreviate it here. And then comes a specific row ID. Let's assume again it's numbered from 0 to n, the number of rows. So row ID, let's assume those are just integers from 0, 1, blah, 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 blah to n. So that is the row ID, the implicit row ID. And that is what I check. So if that value is smaller than the value of the bit list I'm currently looking at. So those are the values that exist in this attribute. Those are the values of the bit list. So whenever this condition holds, we set this map. So that's what we do here. We set the bit to one. That is what happens here. So let's look at the concrete value. Let's say 1982. So we inspect this. This is row ID zero. So we check whether the year of birth value that's represented in the colleagues relation is smaller equal the value. That's not the case. It's greater. So this is zero. If you look at this one, is the value smaller equal? Yes, it's true. So we, so we set, set it to one. Is this smaller? Yeah, set it to one. This, no, it's bigger, zero. Is this smaller equal? It's equal. So we set it to one and so forth. That is how we assign those bits. So basically the bits in the bitmap change their meaning. Now, if I inspect a bit in a specific bit list, let's say this one, let's say I inspect this specific bit list. 
what happens is zero signals the bit here is greater than 1983. This is greater than 1983. This is smaller equal 1983. This is smaller equal 1983. This is greater equal 3 greater, smaller equal 1983, and so forth. So basically, what this allows me to do is to exclude all the elements that are strictly greater than 1983. But I can select all the elements that are smaller equal 1983. That is where the bits are set here. So if the bit is set, this means the value in the colleagues table is smaller equal the value, which is 1983. So based on this condition, we also see that the bit list with the highest value has all its bits set to one. So this means this is information we can discard because all bits must be set to one. So we don't have to physically represent that. So we can really discard this bit list. And that is what I do here on this slide. I dropped the bit list with a max value 1987. It doesn't have to be represented. Now the interesting question is how do I process queries? So let's look at that. Let's look at bitmap operations that we want to do. Let's go back to our initial example. We're interested in those colleagues that were born in that range 1980 to 1984 including well this is relatively easy so how do we get everyone who's born 1984 or smaller well we look at this bit list here right this is everything smaller equal 1984 but we have to get rid of those bits of people that were born in 1979 or younger 1979 or younger well this is this one, right? So this is smaller equal 1979. So basically we can concentrate on those two bit lists. Only those two bit lists have to be read. But how do we combine the information? Well, that's easy. We just say, we take this bit list here, 1984, bit list of 1984 and not bit list of 1979. Whenever a bit is set to 0 in 1979 and set to 1 in 1984, we, neg we negate this bit here. So this means 1 and 1 gives 1. So this would output a bit in this specific row. So whenever it is 0 here and 1 there, we will output a 1. If it's one here and one there, this means actually this entry is smaller equal 1979. In this case, it's exactly 1979. This is not part of this interval. So in the computation, we negate it. This becomes zero, zero, and one gives a zero. So it's not part of the result. If it is zero here, so it can't be true anyway. So nothing that is zero here will be considered anyhow. That is kicked out already here on the left part of the end operation. Only if it is one, we continue. So you could also see it like that. If it is one on the left side, if the bit is set on the left side, only in those cases where it is zero here, we will output a one bit. Only in those situations, because only in those situations, we see an entry that is in the range. If this is set to one, like here, the entry is smaller equal 1979, which means the entry is not part of this range. That is the range we're looking at. This is the range we're looking at. If there's a one left to that range, it can't be part of that range and therefore we don't output it. So that's how we translate a range query. And of course, the big advantage is that you only have to look at those two bit lists during query processing. The gains depend on how many bit lists would have to be Considered if it were a standard bit list representing the individual values only, but here you gain a lot. And, what, and of course, what you could also do is a query like a point query as before. So how do we obtain all those colleagues that were born in 1983? So a point query, everything where year of birth is 1983. Well, that's really easy because this is a range, right? 1983, this is a range from 1983 including to 1983 including, right? So how do we translate that? Well, it's really easy. We say we take the bit list of 1983, that's a right boundary of the interval, 
1983 and not bit list 1982 okay so what is the result to that so 1983 is all of this so um so here this not condition kicks in so this is a result oh here it's set to one so it's not a result not a result here already on the left side it's removed because it's set to zero it's not a result here there's a one it's not a result this is a result not a result not a result this is set to one here so it's not a result not a result not a result not a result so in summary there are only two results right that is this one here and that one so it's row id is zero and one two three four five zero and five those are the ones that qualify so let's go back is that correct so that was the original bitmap where we only represent the individual values and here we see it this is row id zero one, two, three, four, five, and that is five. So we get the same result, even though by using a range encoded bitmap. And then there's this little drawback, of course, that you see. If you do a point query on this bitmap, you only read one bit list. If you do a point query on a range encoded bitmap, you read two bit lists. So it's a factor of two more data you have to read here in this situation to get all those values with 19 83 exactly so space comparison is easier explained above the only thing we lose is the one bit list here so in this example we had one two three four five six seven eight before it was nine rather than nine bit lists of length n, we have eight bit lists again it depends on the number of bit lists you have in a real scenario so there's a little advantage in terms of space comparison here in the range encoded bitmap if you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.